Sarah, thank you so much. And of course, you'll be there reporting on those I World Bank meetings uh, all throughout the day. Well, for more on the meetings today, I want to bring in the former chief economist of the IMF, Simon Johnson, certainly knows the institution very well. He's now a professor at the MIT Sloan School of Management and a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute of Economics, also the author of White House Burning, The Founding Fathers, Our National Debt, and Why It Matters to You. A great read, but also a scary read as well on the state of our economy. Uh, uh, professor, let me start off, though, with the IMF and what Sarah was just saying. Look, it's any amount of money that they that they receive from their from the from the member countries going to really shield the global economy from what's going on in Europe? No, uh, in the sense that the Europeans have to fix their own problems, and those are at a scale beyond which the IMF can provide some magic amount of funding. However, the IMF can buffer some smaller economies. Uh, the big emerging markets, I think, can take care of themselves. But the, to be sure, there are plenty of countries that would be sideswiped if Europe uh, really went into another phase of deep crisis. But the, 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 the fact that Christine Lagarde you know, has come out very fully uh, you know, to talk about the amount that they've raised, that they've achieved $320 billion, uh, in some measure is trying to instill confidence, right? Yes, uh, certainly she is representing the Europeans uh, and she's continuing what she was trying to do when she was uh, Minister of Finance in France. But she doesn't have the Americans with her, uh, Betty. It's really, really striking and amazing. And the Americans aren't there for two reasons. First, they can't get any money from Congress. That's obvious. Right. But also, they, they understand that the Europeans have a governance problem, meaning how they run the Eurozone and, and the, the operating principles uh, of the Eurozone. And that's what needs to be fixed. And bailing them out protecting them with some generous uh, money from outside is not going to help them make progress. Right, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I want to just run for you a, a soundbite that we have from Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner talking about the, what the Europeans should do uh, with their own issues. I want you to just listen to it. You know, Europe is a relatively rich continent. It absolutely has the financial resources to manage this problem. It's got to play the dominant financial role. And we wanted to see them put a more forceful commitment behind that basic reality, financial reality. So that's, in a sense, echoing what you just said, Professor, which is, you know, that the Europeans really have to do this themselves, that the U.S. are not going to be there. How does that play out, though, in Europe? Well, I think the Europeans um, make changes only when forced uh, by, by the markets. Perhaps, though, there'll be continuing pressure in Spain. Perhaps attention shifts to another country, such as Italy. Uh, the Europeans do respond. They respond uh, at the last minute and in a desperate way, in, in a way that has not yet provided a, a more systematic uh, solution. Uh, but I think over, over a period of, of years, not months, uh, they, they will actually move in a better direction. Uh, and, and Professor, I want to get your sense. I mean, look, you know, we know this has been an ongoing 18-month story here in Europe. But just in the last few months, or last few weeks, I should say, really, uh, we've seen sort of more concerns about Italy, more concerns about Spain, and watching the bond auctions more carefully. Now you've got some concerns about a credit downgrade in France. Uh, again, are we, are we moving up the level of nervousness here in Europe? Oh, absolutely. And, and we're putting more pressure. They are putting more pressure on the European Central Bank to provide so-called liquidity support for dealing with what are fundamentally solvency issues and issues of competitiveness within the Eurozone. So this is not a good way uh, to, uh, to address the, the problems. And right. they, they've not yet found political agreement around anything like a lasting solution. Well, is there anything, just on a final note, uh, that the IMF and the World Bank meetings this time around could do to sort of ease the current concerns that are going on right now, anything to come out of the meetings that could do that? I think these, these meetings would be, be uh, rather inconsequential, but the, the key issue, Betty, is financial systems and the equity that we have in our biggest banks. Airholder capital is the key. That's the buffer against losses, and it is incredible and unconscionable that the U.S. authorities, including Mr. Guyton and including the Federal Reserve, have agreed to have our biggest banks reduce their capital, pay out dividends, have share buybacks, uh, given what is happening in Europe and given the fact that the IMF and the U.S. have nothing to say, nothing they can really do to help stabilize the European situation. And the Europeans are intent on driving themselves as fast as they can off a pretty steep cliff. Mm, all right, certainly a, a comparison there. Thank you so much, Simon. I appreciate you joining us again, Simon Johnson, professor at MIT. And coming up